Next finish we're going to run is, is Terranio. So any base coat that Al showed in his training session can be used. It needs to be fully dry. Then every color of Terranio has a pre-chosen color coordinated primer. The primer needs to be applied over the top of the base coat. So you're going to see these colors all use the same primer. So that base coat's got primer over the top of it. You can roll it, spray it, however you want to get it on the wall surface, but it just needs to be primed. Generally, I like to do it at least 24 hours prior to. Some cases when the sun's shining, you know, four hours later, you can go over the top of it. But ultimately, color-coordinated primer over the top. Tyranneo, let's see if I can get some of those flakes. Basically has mica flakes in it. So people will ask, well, can it be spray applied? There's one of the mica flakes, okay? Will that go through a hopper gun? No, it will not, okay? Terranio, and you'll notice how Al trials it, use the mica flakes as the determining thickness. So he'll trial it, and then the last stroke will be one directional, because if not, it'll drag the mica flakes, and you'll have tracking visible in the finish. So you just trial it on. So notice on that downstroke. Take a downstroke out and step back for a second. So like this, that's where that mic is dragging. Okay. So you just use that as a gauging mechanism. You lay your trout about a 10 degree angle off the, off the wall surface. Normal textured finish is like this, right guys? You're pulling it down tight. With the Tyranneal, the last stroke, you'll, you notice how Al's trowel just goes like this. It's really close to the wall. Think in terms of white coat. What do you do with white coat? Trowel's not up on edge. It's laying flat, okay? Then at that point, all you're wanting to do is lay everything down. You see voids, you just work it in. You can use a stainless steel trowel as Al is using. You can use a plastic float, but you don't float it. If you float it, you'd hear that rubbing sound, right? All you're trying to do is just lay it down nice and smooth. That's it. So it's a real easy finish. People assume that it's real difficult to work with. The key is the guy troweling it on, not the guy manipulating when it's all said and done. The guy putting it on is the secret. Say again, please. Looks great on detail. It, it's a little bit harder, but the key is what you, what you actually do with it, trowel it on, and then kind of let it take up where it kind of gets that bite just like you would ornamental plaster. Instead of taking your trowel and pulling to the heiress, what do you do? You pull away from the heiress so you don't knock the corner off. You push back in away from the heiress. So again, it's no different than doing ornamental plaster. But yeah, there's a lot of projects where they're doing shapes and trims and bands. Say again, please. Sorry for the trowel noise. Okay. Right. So I, again, when you look at each one, it's really probably, as far as the, being beautiful, I think it's really a neat product. Some little accents and that sort of thing. There's a color Black Beauty, one Snow White, there's ones called Whistler. Really some, some neat finishes. As, there, a of there is a variety of colors. We even do special matches. So generally, for the most part, starting with standard colors, just like Ford for their brand wall. When you walk in, they wanted a special blue. We matched it. You just got to give us a little bit of time. If they're wanting a special color, we can do it, but we have to submit what that color is desired and then see what stones are available and then we can tell you whether or not we can do it, okay? But generally what you're going to see, a lot of the standard colors are more than sufficient for what everyone needs, but it's a great accent. It really is. Neat product. Yeah, Bob. 
90. Yeah, Bob. Large projects should be ordered as one production batch. Any, any finish that you see up here should be ordered as one production batch. Right? And I think the key is, you know, just like if you're going to change elevations and you run two buckets short, don't run that elevation until you get the balance of the material. Box it, right? We mix it all together and then apply it and then you're not going to see it at that outside corner. But these are the kinds of finishes, you know, on something like this, just imagine you're two pails short. You don't want to be two pails short. Now, 90 square feet, guys, is based upon flat walls. What happens if we use your example and we're doing ornamental shapes, right? Are you going to get 90 square feet? You're going to be like me. You're going to drop more. You're just going to. You're not going to get that same level of coverage. So what we would strongly encourage for any project, typically you have to submit a mock-up. Do a mock-up. It's to your benefit. Why? You can anticipate the coverage that you're going to get. Not what I get, what you're going to get. And so that you have a pretty good idea that going in, it's not going to be 90 square feet. Because of those ornamental shapes, it's going to be 85, or it's going to be 72. It's all going to be relative specific to that project. Flat wall, you're going to get 90. Right on it. Right dead on it. Okay? Any other questions about Terneo? How many guys have used it? Anyone here? Anyone put up Terneo finish thus far? Okay. It's not new, but it's been around for quite a while, but it, it's really a, a neat finish to work with. It really is. All right. Say again, please. I'm sorry for the background noise. I wasn't able to. For each of the, you probably want to speak with Century on pricing as it relates to that, and they can, they can explain to you what it is, freight, location, and all those kinds of things, but just speak with the distributor and they can help you with that, okay?